Hi, Ninja Nerds. In this video today, we're going to be talking about the brain stem and continue on in this neuro series. But before we get started, don't forget to check out NinjaNerd.org, where all of our notes and illustrations are for every lecture we put up here on YouTube. And if you like this sweatshirt, go over and check that out in our links down below. Also, if you do like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe. Now, as we talk about the brain stem, we're going to quickly run over what we've talked about so far in our neuro series. So we're looking up here. Let's run through really quickly. We have this big pink portion here, which is our cerebrum. We have this area in the middle here that we already covered called the diencephalon. So that has things like our thalamus, our hypothalamus, our pineal gland, our pituitary gland. And we've covered all that in a previous video. We've also talked about the cerebellum. And then we have right in here, the portion of our video that we're gonna be focusing on today is our brain stem. So as you can see, we have it located in three different colors written out because there are three primary parts of the brain stem. So what I want you to first understand from this lateral left diagram that we have drawn here where we have anterior here and posterior here, we have the skull going all the way around. We have our cerebrum that is superior to our brain stem, right? And our brain stem is anterior to our cerebellum. So as we look at the brain stem, we can see this brown portion here. That is one portion of the brain stem that's called the midbrain. We have this yellow portion here, which is known as our pons. And then the green portion here at the bottom, which is our medulla oblongata. So if we look at the brain stem here, we can see there's a portion that eventually exits the skull, right? So we have this opening here called the foramen magnum, and that's where we have our brain stem that eventually exits and we have our spinal cord. So just something to understand there. And as we look at the brain stem, we can see it's kind of located in this nice little area between all these vital other portions that we've learned about. We want to understand what the main function of the brain stem is. So the main function is to allow communication. Basically, it's going to take communication from the cerebrum up to the cerebellum, or down to the cerebellum from the cerebellum back up to the cerebrum. It's going to go to talk to the rest of the part of the body, the spinal cord. So all that is going to allow for communication. And when we say allow for communication, we're talking about all those different types of input and output, afferent, afferent types of passageways that are going to allow all those neuro information to be sent to the brain, out of the brain, and moving in throughout the rest of the body. So when we talk about each individual portion in a little bit, we're going to hit on what each one does. But for the most part, it's this highway that's going to allow all this different communication to occur. And one of the things that we need to talk about are peduncles. So if you don't know what peduncles are, these are the blue things here for us that are located. We have three of them that are located within our brain stem. We have our superior cerebellar peduncle, middle cerebellar peduncle, and inferior cerebellar peduncle. And what we're looking at here are the connections from the brain stem to the cerebellum in order for their communication to move through. So these fiber nerve tracts are allowing them to move these information in and out to allow then that information to move up and down our body, going into our cerebrum, going into our spinal cord, into the rest of our body. And if we understand that, we can understand that there is a couple different ways that they attach. So the midbrain has the superior cerebellar peduncle, and that's connected posteriorly, where the pons has the middle cerebellar peduncle, and that's connecting in the anterior portion. And then we have the mandula, which has the inferior cerebellar peduncle, and that is also connected posteriorly. So you can see that here. And that's going to allow for different types of fiber tracts to move back and forth within our pons, brain, and medulla to our cerebellum and then to the rest of the body. So because of all those different types of little pathways, little roadways that we have here, we're going to be talking about the cranial nerves because this is going to allow us to have the cranial nerves send their messages in and out and allow for that information to pass through. So if we're looking at this diagram right here, we have our anterior view. Our anterior view, as we're looking in here, we have our midbrain, pons, medulla, and then we have our cerebellum in the background, right? And it's important to understand the cranial nerves. In a future video, we're going to focus in depth on what each cranial nerve does and how it moves out throughout the body. But I want you to understand the importance of the brainstem, that we have cranial nerves 3 through 12 that are exiting from the brainstem and going to various parts throughout the body, just within this little area right here. So if we're looking at the brainstem, within the midbrain, we have these two areas here, these two brown nerves, three and four, ocular motor and trochlear. They are going to be exiting the brainstem through the midbrain. So we have the first one here, 
which is our ocular motor, and that's going to exit anteriorly. And then we have our trochlear, which is actually going to exit posteriorly, and it's going to come and wrap around. So from the midbrain, we can move down into the pons, where the pons has four different cranial nerves. It has our five, six, seven, and eight, so trideminal, abducens, facial, and vestibular cochlear. And when we're looking at that here, there's a couple different ways that it is coming out, but I want you to understand that these are all then anterior. So we have our trigeminal here, which are located here and here. We have our abducens, our facial, and our vestibular cochlear. Abducens, facial, vestibular cochlear. Okay, so you can see that it's mirrored without, within the pons here where we have our five, six, seven, and eight. And then we can move down to our last four, which are in our medulla. With our medulla, we have 9, 10, 11, and 12. So we have our glossopharyngeal, vagus, accessory, and our hypoglossal. These, I think, are the easiest to remember. When you go through, we can just go down the side, and then we have one in the middle. So we have our glossopharyngeal here. We have our vagus. We have our accessory. And then we have our hypoglossal. Same thing on this side. We have 9, 10, 11, and 12. And I want you to note here that the hypoglossal is, is nuggeted basically between these two different structures here. We have our pyramids in the middle of our medulla, which we'll talk about in a minute, and then we also have our olives here. But this is where all of these cranial nerves are exiting the brain stem. They're gonna go out and get that information. They're gonna be able to get information to bring it back. And then it's eventually gonna move up and down the system. And we're gonna focus on these cranial nerves a little more in depth in a different video, talking about which one's motor, which one's sensory, which ones are both. But I just want you to get an understanding here. You'll probably see this diagram again in a future video. But now let's go in and look at a cross section of each, the midbrain, pons, and medulla, in order to understand a little more vital, important structures and a little more of their purpose and function within the body. Now we're gonna look at a cross section of the midbrain. So picture this as we took the brain stem, we cut it into lots of different chunks. So we're able to look at this transverse, posterior at the top here, anterior at the bottom, looking down on this slice of bread, on this slice of the midbrain. I just wanted to point out a couple different anatomical structures that are going to allow us to understand a little more of the function of each portion of the brainstem. So the first one here we have located, it's pulling back off. We talked about them a little before. That is the superior cerebellar peduncle. Superior cerebellar peduncle is attached posteriorly, which you can see here, right? It's taking uh, connection from posterior midbrain to our cerebellum. And what it does is it actually allows for this different transformation or different transferring of neural pathways. It's going to allow communication back and forth. Uh, most importantly is that it's going to allow communication from the cerebellum to the midbrain. And what's important about the superior cerebellar peduncle is that it also decussates. So what that means is that it's crossing over. So at a certain point it'll cross over and then that means that the right side can actually control the left side of the body. Then we can go over here and look at the cerebral aqueduct. That is this area right here in the middle. Cerebral aqueduct is a little canal, an opening that is going to allow the third ventricle and the fourth ventricle and cerebral spinal fluid to flow through. So it allows for circulation of cerebral spinal fluid. It allows for that movement and that cushioning of that cerebral spinal fluid providing for that safety of the brain stem in the brain. Then we can look here at the red nucleus, which is right here. The red nucleus, one of the main purposes of the red nucleus is for motor control, to be able to have control of our movements. And then one of the last portions we're gonna talk about here in the midbrain is our substantia nigra, this purple area right here. What we're looking at here is the ability for motor control to be nice and smooth. And that has to do with one really important job that the substantia nigra has. It has the ability to produce dopamine, right? So dopamine is going to help also with that controlling of movements. It's also going to help with mood. It's going to be able to help with our cognitive function. So if you think of substantia nigra, I always want you to think of the neurotransmitter dopamine. Important for us to understand, talk about dopamine in this area, because when we do talk about different types of neuro problems within 
uh, our patients, one of those that always pops up is Parkinson's, and that can sometimes do with an issue with the production of dopamine. Moving on to the pons, when we're looking at the pons here, same thing, we're looking at this transverse section with our posterior at the top here, anterior at the bottom. As we look down onto the pons, the first thing we're going to identify is this area in the middle called the fourth ventricle. We talked about it previously, where we have the cerebral aqueduct that connects the third and fourth, and it makes sense if the midbrain is sitting superior to the pons, which is inferior, that that cerebral aqueduct, that little tube, then connects to the fourth ventricle, right? So think of it as there is a little pocket up here, a little third ventricle, and then there's like this little tube, a little straw, and then it connects down to the fourth ventricle. So right here within the pons, we have our fourth ventricle. What's in our fourth ventricle? We have cerebral spinal fluid. What can happen within our ventricle here? We have the production of cerebral spinal fluid and we also have the circulation, the movement of it. Next we have our middle cerebellar peduncle. These are the areas here. We want to remember when we talked about this previously that the cerebellar peduncle on the pons is going to be connected anteriorly. So we can see that it's anterior, it's going to wrap back through to get to the cerebellum. So because it is also connected anteriorly, it's going to be creating these long pathways that are going to have messages come from the pons into the cerebellum. And these typically have to do with motor and coordination. Another function of the middle cerebellar peduncle is also with our balance, being able to have a nice equal balance, being able to know if our body is being balanced or not. Lastly, within the pons here, we have our pontine nuclei. The pontine nuclei, this bundle of gray matter here that we're looking at, it's going to allow for communication from the cerebral cortex to the cerebellum. And what it also is going to transmit is this information about our motor coordination going to fine-tune all those voluntary movements and allow for that coordination to be nice and smooth rather than us having some type of jagged movement or tremor or anything like that. So the pontine nuclei is basically going to help control that voluntary movement and fine-tune it. Lastly, Nizhi nerds, we're going to look here at our medulla. So same thing as before, we have this transverse section with our posterior at the top, anterior at the bottom, looking down on this piece of medulla. We're going to touch on three different portions here. We have our inferior cerebellar peduncle, the first one here, which we can note is here coming off the posterior backside of our medulla. So what is the inferior cerebellar peduncle? You want to note first that it also has another name. It can be the restiform body. What it does is it is allowing for communication back and forth from the cerebellum to the cerebral cortex. That communication is afferent and efferent. And the messages that it is sending is all about proprioception basically where our limbs are within space. Next we want to talk about here is our central canal. What we can see here is our central canal. It's underneath our fourth ventricle. It's allowing for that circulation, that movement of cerebral spinal fluid down to the spinal cord and then moving and connecting with everything else. But it's also allowing for that cushioning, right? That cushioning within this area, just allowing that central uh, cerebral spinal fluid to move up through and move down in order for us to be able to you know, move the cerebral spinal fluid, allow it to flow clearly. And then lastly here we have at the anterior portion here are pyramids. We talked about them a little bit before. Pyramids are part of our corticospinal tract, which we'll talk about in future videos. But what the main purpose is of the pyramids is for our voluntary motor control and coordination. Okay, Nisha nerds, that is a very quick overview of the brain stem, touching on a little bit of important structures and things that we're going to be talking about in future videos when we talk about different diagnostics and procedures. So I hope this video made sense. I hope you got something from it. And as always, until next time.